What's going on everyone? I'm back here with another unboxing video. And today I'm going to be unboxing the Tamron SP 24-70 2.8VC lens uh, for Nikon. Uh, so I picked this up off of eBay from a seller called Deals All Year uh, for $785 brand new. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, it was free shipping as well, so very, very nice. I will provide a link in the description if you guys are interested uh, for picking one of these up for yourselves. So, yeah, um, this is a full-frame lens, uh, which is meaning uh, it's meant to be used on full-frame FX DSLRs. You can use it on a DX camera body, but it will have a crop factor of 1.5x. Uh, so you have to factor that in. Anyways, here's the box. Um, so you got the sides here. Here's the front, anything like that. It's pretty much all the same, pretty basic. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got going on here. So, again, this is a lot cheaper than the Nikon variant. I believe the Nikon version of the 24-70 to uh, with VR, I think it ranges close to $2,000 or is over $2,000 if I'm not mistaken. So it's a pretty expensive lens. Um, and this is a really good alternative for those that are on a budget, uh, but still want to have that focal length as well as that wide aperture. Anyway, um, so here is the instruction manuals and warranty card. And then this little piece of paper here is your serial number, which I do not want to show. And then here's the lens itself in this little cardboard box type thing. So let's go ahead and pull this up out of here. There we go. So here it is, and then it kind of folds over kind of nicely, kind of folds over like so, and then there is the lens. So, pull this out. All right. So there's this cardboard, styrofoam, whatever. So, comes with the lens hood, of course, right here. So let's go ahead and take that out and see what it looks like. Um, it's pretty large. Uh, the lens hood itself is relatively small, but the opening is really large because the lens has an 82 millimeter filter size, which is a quite large filter uh, for a lens. Most lenses of a professional grade are usually about 77 millimeters, so it's kind of interesting to have this one with such a large front optic. Um, but anyway, there it is. Um, it's actually a pretty compact lens. Uh, it does have some significant weight to it. It's about two pounds in weight. Um, so it's pretty hefty, uh, but still, nonetheless, it's definitely uh, light enough to still be able to carry around uh, and take pictures on the go, uh, as well as traveling and things like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the lens itself and see what we got going on here. So right here we have the focusing window, which actually has some plastic on it that I'm going to take off. There we go. So there's your focusing window. Um, up here you have your focus ring, uh, then you have your zoom ring. Focus ring is actually really, really smooth. Um, it could... Sh it should get you um, very accurate focus uh, when manually focusing, which is nice. Um, and the closest focus distance is 1.25 feet or 0 0.38 meters, uh, for those wondering. So it can get relatively close to your subject, um, but it's definitely not a macro lens. Um, then anyway, above that you have your zoom ring, uh, which again goes from 24 to 70. And then the front part does extend, so it's not an internally focusing and internally zooming lens. Uh, like the 70 to 200 2.8. Uh, so to keep it in small in size, this is the route that they took, which is kind of cool. I kind of prefer that. Um, again, it does have vibration control, uh, which most 24 to 70 2.8 lenses don't usually have a type of VR or vibration control built in. Uh, so it's nice that this lens does indeed have that. And then you have the USD ultrasonic silent driving focusing motor, so it should be very quiet in focusing. Um, anyway, <clears throat> moving on, on this side we have a switch for autofocus and manual focus. So you can switch that if you want to do manual focus override or do autofocus. Uh, and then we have the VC vibration control on and off switch here. And then you have SP light logo down there. And then on the back we have the rear lens cap uh, and then the rear element. So there's what that looks like, and then you have the aperture control right here, of course, uh, so the camera can adjust that. And then right here we have a lock switch, and essentially what this will do is it will lock the zoom ring at 24 millimeters when you're not using it. So say, for example, you're going to be putting it in a camera bag and you don't want the lens to zoom by itself, you can switch the lock on, and then as you see, you cannot zoom uh, the lens. You turn it off. You can immediately zoom. 
Now, you cannot turn that lock on in any other focal length other than 24 millimeters. So right now we're in 70, and as you can see, you cannot turn the lock on. So it's only for the 24 millimeter uh, focal length. Uh, and then here on the front, we have the front lens cap, and then the front element itself. So again, it's a really, really large piece of glass here on the front. Um, like I said, it's a 82 millimeter filter thread. Uh, so you're gonna have to get really, really large sized UV filters if you wanna protect it, um, which can, start to get pretty pricey because the larger filters you have to buy for some reason the more expensive they get because the more glass that has to be used or whatever i don't know but anyway so yeah it's a pretty large filter size and another thing that this lens has which is one of the reasons why i picked this over uh, the sigma is it has weather sealing so you could basically use this lens in not ideal conditions so say for example you want to use or take some pictures in a a moist environment or uh, in some light rain or whatever have you or a very dusty environment um, you'll be able to do that with this lens with no problem uh, because again it is indeed weather sealed so for the price $785 having this type of lens and have it have VC vibration control as well as weather sealing you cannot beat that that is such a good price for all of those features it's really good um, but you do need to have a camera body uh, such as, say, the D810 or the D750, or even if you're going to go full professional, you the, the Nikon D5. Um, all those cameras have weather sealing or weatherproofing uh, in the D5's case. Uh, so you do need a camera body that can match the lens. Uh, so you don't want to use something like a D3300 or D3400 and put this lens on there and then go out into a rainy condition. You'll screw up your camera body but the lens will be safe so yeah just make sure you both have a camera body that um is weather sealed as well um but yeah that's pretty much it for this unboxing video i will have some sample images at the end of this video uh, so you guys can check out the image quality um, i will also have a video test for both a natural light during the day as well as some low light video tests using this lens uh, at the aperture wide open of 2.8 so you guys can kind of get an idea of the low light capabilities of this lens so yeah with that all being said hope you guys have enjoyed uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below it is greatly appreciated helps out the channel hit that thumbs up button uh, that's also much much appreciated and if you guys have any questions comments or anything along those lines just drop them below and I'll get back to them as soon as I possibly can. So yes, with that all being said, once again, hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.